All right, everyone, welcome to So What Do You Know About Business, episode number 22. This is the happy hour podcast where five women entrepreneurs gather and just talk about lessons learned in life and in business. I'm your host, I'm Erin Smith, and we have a special guest tonight, Joanna, we'll be introducing. So the conversation always keeps going over in our Facebook group. Make sure you jump over there and join. It's over at bit.ly slash no K-N-O-W business. Uh, we always are talking about, today I just posted something about sleazy sales again. It always seems to come up, but make sure you join us over there. And then this is the part of this session where we go around and we talk about who we are, what you do, and what you're drinking since it is happy hour. Uh, cocktails are not required, but they are encouraged. So Joanna, you are our guest, so I'm going to let you go first today. So just introduce yourself, tell us what you do, what your business is, and if you are drinking, I know it's very late where you are, but... You can so that's a that. reason to drink, though, isn't it? Because I'll have a little glass of wine here. I deserve it after my long day. So <laughs> cheers, everyone. Cheers. Um, so I'm Joanna. I'm a business coach and a career coach. I do business coaching for um, small businesses, um, usually solopreneurs, a lot of uh, holistic therapists. My background is in counseling and psychotherapy, so I have a lot of therapists and counselors and people like that. And I also do some career coaching as well with um, students, uh, mostly MBA students at the moment, just working on career development plans and things like that. So that is me. Awesome. And do you have a website, company name, anything like that? Yeah, yeah. So my website is joannaburncoaching.com. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Taylor, I'm going to go to you next. Okay. I am Taylor Stevens. I do a lot of freelance writing, marketing strategy, as well as pursuing the artist in me on the side. Um, you can catch me on Twitter for now at TaylorJoy315. I am pitiful today. I don't even have anything to drink in my house right now. Like I need water. Like it's it's just stupid. But um, or else I would drink. Oh, and I have a presentation to go to, or I need to present at work after this. So I need to be, you know, I need to be even keel going in there. But that's me. <laughs> you need to be hydrated too, so you should probably get some water. I know, I need to. Story of my life. All right, Chandra, I'm going to go to you next. I am Chandra Ochberger. I am coming to you from Austin, Texas, serial entrepreneur, uh, currently venturing into my artist mode. You can find me at chandrainc.com and. Um, have a lot of things going on. I am still not drinking. I have been sober for like three weeks, which is huge for me because I'm kind of, I like my drink. I like my mama necessary juice. So I have some late night coffee and some water, but at least I have some cool glasses. Cheers. So, slancha. <laughs> you could have lied because that one looks like a Moscow mule. and you could. I, I know, but drinking. it's not. It's from like a root beer company here, but it's just water. <laughs> All right, Andrea, you're next. I'm Andrea Trevilian. I am a small business coach specializing in finances, management, and processes um, at takeasmartstep.com. And tonight I am doing vodka with grapefruit sparkling water. Trying something new. Not sure wow. it's going to be tried again. <laughs> <laughs> Vodka's not really new. You are kind of new. No, the vodka's new. I'm trying new mixers. <laughs> All right. And, um, and I'm Erin Smith. I own the company uh, the Starters Club, which is all about helping people start and build their businesses organically. I am... I just took, I have a coffee that JJ just brought me, and I made it. It's the worst coffee I've ever had, but... Um, I also have this lame no-ice cocktail with... I had some leftover milk and uh, a bottle of Costa Rican Kahlua that's like 20 years old that I just finished up. So I thought something a little different. All right. <laughs> Pour the Kahlua milk mixture into the bad coffee that has ice. Yeah. I don't want to waste it, though, because that coffee is pretty bad. Like, it's really bad. So I'm afraid I would lose that tasty chocolate drink right there. <laughs> <laughs> Making me happy. But I'm going to the circus right after this. I have to drop right when we're oh, done. So I have no, to be semi-sober. I don't think they let you ride the elephant if you're crap face. So <laughs> it might make the circus more exciting. It may. It absolutely <laughs> may. You're right. 
All right, so this is a portion where we go around and just talk about lessons learned. We don't have a specific topic tonight, but uh, it's just a fun time to either talk about something you, like kind of philosophical or a new app you found that made your life easier, whatever it is. We're all about business, but also the juggle of life. So Joanna, since you're a guest, I'm going to let you go first tonight and just talk about a lesson you learned in business this week and, uh, you know, what, how it came about. Well, I have two things that I'm struggling with. The first thing is my little person, I'm a new mom, so he's a year old. So I'm juggling the whole being a mom and having a business. And then when he gets sick, I, I guess we have to schedule like crazy. And then he gets sick. And you're like, okay, I was going to do three things this week, and I did one of them. And I just have to like relax about that. And it's going to be okay. But the second thing, and the most exciting thing that I did actually, was um, I learned a new skill last weekend. I did a three-day training on... EFT, the emotional freedom te technique. Did anyone, have you heard about that? Someone said to me, um, Is it tapping or? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, <laughs> Oh, is that the tapping thing? I'm like, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, so I did the three day training last weekend, the master practitioner thing. I mean, I came across it years ago in work, of all things. Um, I think Gary Craig, the founder, I signed up for his mailing list and I didn't really do anything about it. But then I came up with another program that I was doing about two years ago and I kind of started to use it a little bit. It seems so crazy at first, you know, tapping your head and tapping your forehead and it seems out there. But it does seem to work. So I thought, right, I'll take it a little bit further and I'll go and explore it. So I went into the training last weekend and at the moment I'm just sort of playing around with how I can use this now and where I can take it. That's awesome. No, I'm a firm believer in it. So where do you think you what do you think you want to do with it with your business? Yeah, well it seems massive. You know, I, have you done the training or have you just Oops trying to talk. I haven't done any training. So Yeah. My is fiance the, the, the training is massive and it covers they literally say you can do everything. But I think where it fits for me is more around the mindset piece. Because uh, a lot of my coaching, it always comes down to mindset coaching. We do a lot of marketing, a lot of business stuff. But it, it mostly comes back to mindset and working on the mindset. And I think that's probably where I'm most comfortable doing it, you know, working on beliefs, working on blocks, breaking them down, helping people to feel a bit more comfortable and, and experimenting with it, you know, and just tapping and, and working through some of those blocks that are there. So I think that's where I, where it fits for me and that's the bit that I connected with most. I mean, what do you use it for, Erin? So how I got first introduced to it was, I was so my fiance is a chiropractor and he does like, he does a lot of applied kinesiology stuff with his, so like he would just do um, just weird stuff. I, I didn't know about any of it, but like when you were eight, you had um, something where you felt inadequate, bring back that memory and then he'd tap out certain parts of that and make the adjustment. So that's where I first got introduced to it. And then I was actually at a conference in November where I met Nick Ortner, who's a big tapper, and we did a lot of different things. I don't incorporate as much as I should. Uh, it's part of what I'll talk about tonight. It's all, we always have a theme. It's so weird. We always have themes. So part of what I'll talk about tonight is stuff I'm introducing into my daily routines. And um, I know that's something I want to like incorporate even every day, just trying to tap it out, because I really think there is power to it. It's very interesting to me, just how we hold on to certain things that end up completely, you know, killing our lives if we don't get control of them. Yeah. I mean, it's funny, because I don't think I'm particularly woo-woo, but I definitely embrace those practices. I mean, I've used kinesiology, and I've, you know, I've used Reiki and pieces like that at various times in my life, but this one really, really stands out for me. It's, it's really worked, and even though I think we don't really understand why or how, it does actually work. I don't, I don't know why. Do any of you other guys use tapping? I completely agree with that. I have, um, and I have to say that, like, when I first found it, I'm like, yeah, whatever. Um, and then the true do-it-yourselfer in me who thinks she can do everything was like, I'll get a book and I can do it. <laughs> and I tried it that way and I'm like, this totally doesn't work. And then I kind of hit one of those, you know, moments where you're kind of trying to deal with your past crap and it doesn't, you know, you're kind of at a block. And I'm like, um, at the exact same time, a lady I know had just finished her training but had to do like supervised calls. Um, and so she was like, would you be willing to do it, you know, so I can get my, my time in? I'm like, sure. And 
holy crikeys, did it clear stuff that I, like, I just, it changed everything. It was amazing. So do you still do it? Occasionally. Um, I kind of use it now as kind of more of a, you know, when I'm not quite sure where to go with something, or like when I'm in a really stressful situation, like airports, um, if I'm not there really early, stresses me out, so sometimes I'll tap at the airport. <laughs> but so that I don't look like a freak, I just use this spot here, and I just keep yeah. going like this. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Why does that not surprise me, like, not even a little bit? <laughs> I need better. this tapping in my life. <laughs> yeah, it's good. I mean, there's lots of videos on YouTube. I mean, Brad Jates is a really popular one. And you can just follow along if you're, you know, just getting used to it um, and follow along to videos. And they're really good to get your head around it and get practicing. Yeah, I'll do that. Do it. Yeah. And then course, I'll have my own videos soon, you know, hopefully. <laughs> exactly. Google Joanna in a few weeks. Yes. Until then, like mm -hmm. Nick Horner and his sister do a lot, a lot of videos on how you can do it. That's cool. All right, well, Taylor, let's go to you. What did you learn uh, this week? Yeah, so I am... Um, mm -mm. It's not necessarily something I learned, but I'm learning, and um, it's a new experience for me. Basically, the startup contacted me, and uh, they wanted me to come in and talk to them um, about basically just doing like a marketing type position for this new company that's like launching in April. They've already, it's really an awesome company, um, technology. Um, they've already tested what, you know, their product is about and their service and they basically blew the venture capitalists away with how much they actually funded um, from what they gave them and, and all that stuff and um, it's just a different experience in that, like, I, I'm a lot better at, um, so, like, I'm kind of negotiating, like, my price points with them, because it's something that I really, like, I feel like I really want to take the risk in doing this, because I'd have a lot of creative freedom, um, and it'd be really closely aligned to more of what I'm wanting to do, especially more of my time in marketing and, um, you know, like, social engagement and, like, PR stuff and like just getting out there and going to events. It's different though because I'm so used to knowing like my prices on like what I would charge for like articles, writing articles and stuff like that or like time based on like what strategy I'm figuring out or marketing plan. But this is different because it's like I kind of need to negotiate my whole, I need to negotiate my salary and like I'm not really sure how to go about that for like an all like a very time consuming position. It's not like project based. It's like I'd be part of the team. So that's just something new that I'm going through right now and trying to figure it out. Any any tips, advice? <laughs> well, well, I mean, Let me ask you go ahead, Chandra. No, no, go ahead, Erin. No, I was just gonna ask first question is where does this take you from everything else you're trying to do? Well um, it would, t I would have to reduce my hours where I work now because, um, there's no way I could do both of them and my freelance work on the side and dance and act. So it's like, I definitely have to like give and take time sacrifice. The thing is, is I can't leave my current job until July because I have stocks and I can't pull out before the period ends because I'm going to get something from it. And, um, I have benefits and like, you know, as startups, it's risky. Like I don't, really know, even though they've proved, you know, what they're doing two times over, but still, it's still a risk, and um, I think it'd get me closer to more of what I'm seeking in marketing um, and building on my professionalism, like it's more of a development opportunity for me that I could mesh in with my, like, dance and acting at some point. I mean, does the, does the position allow you more... Um freedom of time. Yeah, it's not like, oh, you need to be here 9 to 5. It's like, you're here when you're here and just get the work done. And um, do you... We'll need team meetings and stuff like that, obviously, but <laughs> they're like, no, we totally support you wanting to dance and act, and we don't want to take over your life. And do, do your 
do um, your values align with their values? Like as far as their their overall mission on where they're going, do they align? Yeah, I mean, I feel it was a good vibe when I met. So I met with one of the head of operations the first time, and then the second time I met with the whole team, and like it was a really like fun, like good energy environment, um, and they're really motivated. Like I feel like they're on my, in terms of like, especially in my age range, like it's hard mm -hmm. to find people like that that are actually that driven and like doing something mm -hmm. that they really believe in. Well, I mean, and so then, like, looking for a salary, I um, suggest just like you would if you were going to look for a job. I mean, basically, look and look and see what the baseline is for whatever the position is. But um, with startups, even if they are funded, right? Like, I mean, uh, it's it's going to be a trade-off because that time is is what the like the time that you have, which will allow you to pursue like dancing and acting which is yeah. why you're there in the first place. Um, yeah. That's a trade, I mean, that's a trade-off for, like, basically, you know, incentives. Usually, startups will be like, okay, well, here is, you know, when we go public, this is what you're going to have, and, and, and that all, all that stuff they put into the picture as far as, like, you're not going to get paid <laughs> that much, like, what a, what a proven company, obviously, um, is, yeah. but, but, like, but, that's it, it. It is a hard thing, hard, hard thing to weigh. But you do. Ha I mean, like number one, I think a lot of people just don't when they're first going in for for something like this. Is like, what is the culture, right? Like, you get a good vibe, but also like, what what is their mission statement? Like, are they on track? Like, um, getting getting funding is great. Like, getting sponsorship is great. But like, um, do I would even look into who's who funded it. Who's who's who are their funders, and see if like w what their track record is, and see um, what the traject traje trajectory of the two together look like, and if that makes sense to you as well. Because it, there are a lot of risks, but there are a lot of risks with everything, right? I mean, like they might, you know, they they might not care about like the work culture you know like some companies do like I, I think like of Airbnb those guys were are like very much on like this is our company culture this is where we want to go and and when people were coming in at first they were very very clear about how you know what direction that was going in and some are you know want to sell to five you know they want to be like okay we want to be Instagram we want to sell to Facebook you know like for a billion dollars and of course that would be nice but like you kind of need to know. You need to know what their ducks in a row are, and if they align with your ducks. Yeah. And, and the other thing you, the other oh, thing you need to keep in mind is, you know, um, startups. It's not always about the salary. You know, it is kind of the culture, the energy, the flexibility, but also being in on the ground floor. So mm -hmm. if, if you believe that this is truly going somewhere. Part of your negotiation can be, you know, ownership. You know, at some point, yeah. do I get to buy in or whatever, you know, whatever that looks like. Because if it's a great company and they're going someplace, you want that. You know, you want to be the first handful of people at Google. You want it to be the first handful of people at Microsoft. And is this company that? It seems like it. When they've when they've talked to me, and when the investors how they talk about it, like it does, like that's the goal. I mean, it's a goal with any company, but it seems like it's a very it's a very tangible goal of theirs for people to own it and be able to like just really not have to like slave away, but you know, create a really solid team get paid very well and then like basically go off and like I don't know go do like the specifics were uh, the specifics around the money part weren't really talked about which I was concerned about because yes it's a great experience but like for my uh, for my position right now like the situation that I'm in right now it's like it's just very it's scary because I need a certain amount of income like per month in order just to like live out here and 
What? You need yeah. to eat? What the heck? <laughs> 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 well, it doesn't even have any... Well, but the thing is, though, even in a marketing level, they should be able to pay you a pretty... Even if at a startup, whatever, yeah. but you're marketing, you're doing something pretty significant, you, they should be able to pay you to easily meet your bills, you know? I mean, yeah. and if they can't, then that's your answer right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, I was going to add that as well. I mean, what is it that you want from a job? Is it that it's going to give you the security and fund, so that, fund the other things that you want to do, or is it an equal part, or is it a main part for your life? What is, the, what is it that you want from a job, and is this opportunity going to provide that for you? Yeah, um, I definitely want the uh, development aspect of it because I feel like it'd be a great experience for me to grow and like really have some um, like leadership in in doing something in business um, like outside of work, a little bit more autonomous, I guess, like more direction based. I guess like I'd get to make more decisions, which is nice. Um, and it would, I feel, it would definitely. From how they were speaking about it, it sounds like it would fund me, um, I guess, better. Fund me in a way that that more more than I'm funded now <laughs> at some point, but um, enough to like be able to support my activities. Yeah, and I mean, so then I guess it's around, you know, how comfortable are you with the risk that you have to take by leaving the other job, which is a bit more secure. Yeah. That's well, the thing is, I can't leave question. the other one until July because I I'm not yeah. leaving without some ownership. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Can you juggle? Because I mean, okay, even if you come to a contract and go, you probably it'll shoot till sometime in April before you even begin. Even if you agreed on something right now. Yeah. So that puts you May and June to try to juggle the two. Could you juggle the two for a couple months? I think the so because I only have to work like a minimum of fifteen. At the other job, so yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you can push it out like till May, even in June, then you could even potentially only have like a month or so. Yeah. Like yeah. July will come around so quick. Especially if you're I know. working every week. I'm not getting married in August, <laughs> so I'm like, oh, the months are going really quickly for me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, especially if you're working eight-hour days on the weekend, it'll go by real fast. <laughs> but I have, like, especially, I know I'm, I'm taking a lot of time, but I wanted to wrap it up really quick because a part, like, thanks for masterminding with me and, like, talking with me about that. The part I'm wanting, like, kind of figure out is how to exactly say that because I feel like I've expressed that I need to be compensated because it's my time. But, like, how would you ask something? Just ask them for a number. Say if you're interested and want to move forward, yes. give me an offer. Yeah, yeah. You, you need to, yeah. ask them <laughs> for a I like that too. Yeah. Yeah, you have to. There's no beating around the bush. And this is this is a huge problem and why, like, women, women up, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you know, like most guys don't have a problem with this, right? Like, it's mm -hmm. just like, talk about money. Like, that's what you need yeah. to live. That's what they need to pay you in, you know, like... It's not, this is not people's, fe this is not feelings, right? This is just money. And the worst that can happen is they can be like, whatever. But I like Andrea's idea of just being like, hey, what, what, did, what did you have in mind? And then you can be like, and you can walk away. And if they throw that back at you, you know, then you, you have to throw out high. Like, you have to start out high, right? Like, if they throw mm -hmm. it back. Well, and throw something that you would absolutely feel comfortable where you're not going to feel. Because if right now you were like, okay, maybe if they give me 40, you know, be comfortable that if you're going to put your crap on the line, if you're going to put, what, you know, some of your dreams on the line, that if they're paying you a ton of money, you're okay with it, right? But if mm -hmm. you're going to be miserable there and a little bitter that if they, if you throw something out and they bite at it and you're not going to be happy with it, then don't throw it out there. Like really figure out where you want to be. Um, what's it going to take to support you right now, plus more, and you know that's set your minimum negotiation because you're not in a point where you're desperate. You don't have to have this job, um, yeah. And just set it like that. Cool. And also, what Thank you can you provide so. for them because you're going to be double. You're going to be doing double duty as well, right? So yeah. I mean, it's not to say like knock anything off, but like um, just be realistic about it. Like write down. What are what my duties? What my duties are going to be, and what you think they're worth? Um, it's I mean it's yeah. it's not 
we just get so twisted about money and it's just it's craziness it drives me I nearly, crazy I nearly, I nearly kind of think about what you're comfortable with as you guys are saying and then add a little bit um, to it just to put it out there because we, I think we nearly always undervalue ourselves a little bit so just yeah. push it a tiny bit just what do you think you're worth and then add a little bit to it Okay. So that <laughs> helps so much. Thank you. Thank you guys. Really. Like think really of all your words and double it. Just double it. Okay. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Chandra, you're up. Hey, so um I guess I wanted to start off with an actual like physical tip uh, as far as um you know, we tri we I don't I don't think I mentioned this last week. I started to, but then I went off on a tangent because I'm so freaking random. But um when you're setting up a uh, like a feed, like a Bitly account, like I've I've come to the conclusion that like when you're doing a shortener, like Bitly or Google, to basically set up a subdomain, like a permanent subdomain that you can redirect, so that whenever a feed changes, like it doesn't go to, um, you can just redirect to that. Like so so like for uh, so what do you know about business? We should have a you know like action dot so what do you know about business.com and then our bit our bitly could be bitly slash no biz right I mean not that it is right now it's just tied to that old iTunes account and then have and then just no matter what we want to do with that bitly feed because we can't change it or Google shortener or whatever shortener you use just redirect your I'm sorry, I'm getting technical, guys, but redirect your subdomain to wherever you want it to go, and then you have control over that link at all times. So that was like a main thing, and then um, basically lesson lesson learned, which is constantly I see people um, a lot of the time just learning about whatever it is that they're in. Like, so if you're in the business of, if you're a chiropractor, all you learn about is chiropractor, chiropractoring and that business and marketing for that. Or if you're in finance, all you're doing is learning about the marketing for this instead of like looking to see what people in other industries are doing that can relate to you and learning learning from that. I, I see that a lot on like Creative Live because they have a lot of business classes and I don't see and I see people not taking anything that has if it doesn't have to do with photography, they don't take it. And I'm like, you can take you can get so much out of this how to market your book course, even if you don't have a book, because it's gonna help you with your business. You know, like so it's just like be able to look at something and see how you can break it down for for you and not be afraid of, of new things that are totally different. Like you guys are talking about tapping and I've never done it, but I don't, I mean like if it works for you, like and you learn it, like at least give it a try and, and try new things that that may not seem related, but they may not, they may end up not being a waste of time, I guess, <laughs> is what um well, let me ask you this. So I love the point. I think it's a really great point. But where do you divide your time then as you're trying to determine where you want to spend time training and et cetera? Like you don't, you don't want to spend like Creative Live, for example. I don't want to spend too much time on Creative Live if it doesn't really pertain to me at all. How do you determine what you're going to watch and what you're going to take on that might be a little out of the norm? That's true. And I'm a total learning addict. So I do have to, I have to put that. Like I'm a life learner and I, I need to constantly have learning going on in my ear but um, I think just seeing like because all the information is there so like being being like okay am I working on marketing this month like knowing what you're working on this quarter right like specifically I'm working on marketing so is there something you know is there something basically for free or whatever is there a course out there that is gonna dive down and not just like market to the marketers. I just see that a lot. Like I see a lot of like um, everybody just like doing the same exact thing and not going out of their specific place. And I guess you know, like look at the modules if you can. Like instead of spending time on a webinar, like I don't spend time on pe a lot of people's webinars because I like I'll look at whatever the modules are or see if they have slides for something and read their emails and then be like, okay, they're going to cover these things this course would be good for me 
you know, like a, if you can look at an outline or something like that and be like, oh, this is this is really this is going to be helpful because they're covering. It's kind of it's no you have to know what your end goal is, I guess, is what it is. And and yes, there aren't enough hours in the day to learn everything because everything is available. But um, I guess I guess my my big point there is just like don't be afraid to look outside of your specific genre, you know. Mm -hmm. It gives well, you more well-roundedness and uh, sorry, Andrea, and a new perspective yeah. on it to for the least you know least experienced. You know, some of the best ideas come from taking courses or doing things that have nothing to do with, you know, what you're doing. It's you. It's almost like you just need that creative spark. So if you're a creative person, you know, your creative spark might come from something that is, you know, just kind of the management boring side. Um, but, you know, when you look at both sides at the same time, at some point it'll kind of marry in together. And it like every or like so many things, like it's it's where things overlap is where you get the most out of it, right? Like when you have concentric circles and it's just looking for those things within courses. And Andrea just uh post I don't know if you just posted that post, but I um I just saw something on on choosing online courses. For oh yeah yeah <laughs> so yeah. like it was a good it was a good article and I, I think I have it scheduled to post on one of my pages but um oh, it's a good you. good article on on how to post but like yeah it's it's important not to get sucked into like trying to do everything buying stuff but like <laughs> it's also important to like just step outside of your own um just your own genre and and know that things are going to you know change and pivot and that setup of the of the subdomain so that you can you can pivot things f when you learn new stuff is like is a good thing to do so <laughs> no i like it i i just need somebody i know we've talked about this before i just need the education osmosis so when i purchase it and it's in my computer it just seeps into my brain without actually having to watch it then i'd be golden like if somebody could develop that or just sleep on your lap in my head <laughs> Take the laptop to bed and just sleep on it. <laughs> <laughs> I wake up with a brain tumor two days later. All right, Andrea, you're next. Okay. Um, before I get into mine, I just want to say one more thing about that is, you know, a lot of people are, like, learning their stuff, like how to be a better photographer, how to be a better speaker, how to do all this stuff. And they do skip the management courses and the finance courses and all that stuff because they're like, eh, that's not fun. It doesn't make me better, you know, at what I do. But the part is, is that's the part that sneaks up and kicks you in the hiney when, you know, you become successful. So you got to cover both sides. Anyway, um, so speaking of courses, I have been working on creating my course um, for the launch like next week. Um, so I've been just kind of in the throes. Um, I've learned a ton. Nothing like overly broad, but really kind of more just about um, way more about tech stuff than I care to know. But I had one of those aha moments where I'm like, I always say I'm a non-tech person. And like, you know, you start, tech person starts talking and I'm like, wah, 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 wah. But then I had this realization that I know way more tech stuff than <laughs> the, the non-techie person knows. <laughs> um, and I think that comes from, I've been self-employed for 13, 14 years. I quit keeping track, 2002. Um, and I've always done all my own tech stuff. It wasn't until within this past year that I've, you know, started hiring people to, to do it. So um, I've been learning how to upload things via FTP and how to put plugins using the cPanel. And I'm learning Optimize Press. And I'm learning how to screencast. And I have learned a lot <laughs> this past week. All techy. Um, but you know, I also learned that once I have the content written, it's like way easy. I love the, I, the that part's like the easy part, the content creation. So create it and get out there. What's your uh, course? Well, 
it is about uh, management and finance basics. So it covers everything from exit strategy to um, how to read your PL, how to create your PL. Um, total mind blank, a little bit about insurance, just kind of all those basics that every business has to have, whether a person knows it or not, and walks you through in a very easy to understand way to set it all up for yourself. A lot of people are missing that out there. Um, <laughs> Who is like your target audience? Like what people are your ideal ones that you want to draw in? Um, I'm trying to design the course that any business owner can take it, but um, really geared towards micro businesses. Most of my clients are, you know, five-ish employees and under. So, um, you know, everything from your independent freelancer to, you know, a small local roofing company would gain benefit from it. Cool. Is this your first one you've put out? No. No, no. Yeah. I have a personal finance course out there, but this is yeah. the first business one I've done. Do you love Optimize oh, Press? Cool. You know what? I honestly haven't gotten into it enough. I've been trying okay. to create all the videos so I can do it all at once. So the only thing I've done is set it up. I bought a new URL because I decided I wanted the two to be kind of independent. Um, so I got it loaded on and... Um, put a landing page on it, and that's all I've done with it. But um, I want to. Now I'm ready to. Tomorrow is going to be upload kind of the first couple of modules and everything. But um, uh, Julia from our old mastermind is she is creating a course on how to do the tech side of Optimize Press for a course. And so I'm using her videos to kind of go through and teach me how to do it, kind of. So um, she hasn't had anybody do it, and she's launching at the end of April. So I'm going through to make sure I the videos are easy to understand and everything. So um, I'm hoping it's going to be a smaller learning curve. Awesome. No, it, it's honestly really easy. It's really easy. And if you have somebody explaining the tech part of you, it should be a piece of cake. I really love Optimize Press. Well, and I the couple I've gone to their site to watch a couple of their videos, and they're really good and really thorough. It's not mm -hmm. like it's not like there's one video for install it this way. There's like six videos on how to install it, and they're really really good. I've been very impressed with Optimize Press for the little amount of time I've been on it. Very cool. No, I'm I'm a huge fan. I just I have a ton of not a ton, but several courses out there, and it's all on optimized price. I find it very easy. All right, well, um, I'm up. I know we're running out of time. I'm gonna try to keep this as short as possible. But I, and I was not gonna tell you guys about this for a while. I wanted to get a little more into it. Uh, <laughs> don't clap hands, Shonda. So uh, I see she's getting ready. So anyway, okay. So I have this story to tell you. So I was I, I tell you guys about my crazy mind and how I spin out of control about negative things. And I just found myself like in a really bad place where I was just concentrating on the bad too much. Like and just worrying about crap. I've shared some of my worry a lot. So it was at the beginning of this month where I and I know I should meditate, I just and I make it a priority here and there, but there was never any consistency behind it, right? So I read this quote and I'll read you the quote. I was doing a meme and it was um when one devotes oneself to meditation, mental burdens, unnecessary worries, and wandering thoughts drop off one by one. Life runs smoothly and pleasantly. And it's by Nyojin Sanzaki. I can't read my own writing. But I read this quote, and it was just kind of this moment for me. And I was like, you know what? Challenge accepted, Nyojin, or whatever your name is. And I, I made a pact with myself. I took out a journal, and I said, all right, every day, this is non-negotiable, 20 minutes every single day, I'm, I'm meditating, period, end of story. Uh, hold on, I've got, of course, my kids break in at this point. So anyway, um, so I started doing this, and every day, 20 minutes, and it was weird because, like, I would journal, and whatever, every, it always kept coming up was writing, and I was just like, you know, I need to start writing again, and to know me, 
as a child was I literally, and I still have them, I have notebooks of my writings. And my sister is six years older than me, and I would actually give her friends uh, when they were in high school, like my stories, and they'd be waiting for my stories. I just wrote so much. And then high school happened, college happened, and I just slowly, I kept writing, but it just got less and less and less. And so I'm journaling, and I'm like, you know, I just, I got to keep writing, I got to keep writing. Well, we talked a couple weeks ago of how I finally, I was in editing mode for too long of my book and I'm like I'm never I'm never gonna finish this I'm not you know I got it it's gotta be perfect it's gotta be perfect and I'll be honest with you I have a very I'm very self-conscious of my vocabulary I feel it's very limited I don't feel like I have a very extensive vocabulary so I've always been like my writing's like a two-year-old you know it's what I feel like sometimes so I putzed and putzed and putzed fine I'm gonna start crying I finally delivered it to an editor I found an editor through recommendations and such and I didn't hear from her for like a week. And I'm like, okay, oh my God, what's happening? So I finally get this email. I'm just going to read you the first two lines of this email. Because like I literally just, it's this whole thing of being in alignment and knowing what you're supposed to be doing. And I've never been more calm in this, like seriously, in these past few weeks. I've, I've, been, I've never been more productive. I, you know, even though I'm quote unquote taking 20 minutes out of my day to, do other things it's just I've knocked out I feel like I told somebody today I'm like I threw a ton of balls up in the air and I feel like I'm just slowly just knocking them out because it's it's just so clear to me it's just weird so anyway I get this email and I said uh, good evening Aaron so I have a few things first wow and that will lead into the rest second after rereading the preface in the chapter one again my eldest daughter came in from her boyfriend's baseball game she needed an ear and I filled her full of advice that came from my readings in these chapters thank you and it was just this moment for me, and the rest of the email went on to talk about how much she loved it and how much she was moved by it. <laughs> I was like, that's all I've wanted from this business was to, you know, hopefully inspire just one person, right? Like, just life's too short to be miserable or to be scared. And my lessons learned is, first of all, meditate. Like, you don't have time not to. Oprah has one. I know we talked about it before, Andrea. I do part of hers. I actually now, it's not quite yet consistent, but I'm to a point where I meditate once during the middle of the day and then once before evening. I actually want to get to a point where I do three times a day and incorporate things like EFT, et cetera, because it really ha like it's made such a difference in my life. I didn't do it one day and had nightmares that JJ was cheating on me. <laughs> Great. I'll tell you, I'm crazy. And the second one is just, my God, like, you just never know and it's been you know I'm almost a year at my business and it's just been breaking through fear after fear after fear and you just we hold our own selves back we tell ourselves crap about ourselves that no one else sees but yet we believe it and it's just been it was just so, like you guys I haven't given anyone my writings in tw 25 plus years and just to get that I'm like okay I can do this like okay I can do this like it was just it was a pretty amazing moment for me so uh, definitely not giving up on my meditation I was gonna wait a little while before I just talked about it but it just kinda all came up into a, a full circle moment so that's what I learned yay I'm, that's so awesome I'm so glad you shared that because like you said I think we're all on like the same we get on this theme every week and I was talking to one of my mentors this morning and like I also have, you know, I think all of us work like this. We just have a ton of things going up in the air, yeah. and we have all these balls, and because um, we just can't stand to be bored and want to be productive. And I was like, I just feel like the thing, she's like, what's most important to you this week? And she ended the call, and she called me. She said she's going to call me five minutes later. And she said, what was the thing that came to you? You know, like, without really thinking about it. And I said, I really need to take time for me first and I came and I need to really do that I need to meditate more I'm gonna do it <laughs> no just 20 minutes like I said just I, and you could even probably do it less but I was like 20 minutes minimum always mm -hmm. that's so awesome and like like getting out of your own way right like I mean like we are we always get in our own way and like we're, we're like our biggest 
Yeah, we just need to get out of our own way. And then the whole negativity thing. Like, so every year I do an ACC anti-complain campaign where I take a month off of complaining. Like, literally a month off. And I'm super sarcastic. So <laughs> it's really, really hard because, you know, like, because... Some, there's a fine line between sarcasm and and just being plain old negative, right? And um, so yeah, so starting April first, I I start ACC because I, I I find myself, and not only me, I find my kids like they just their attitude is totally different too. And also, um, a couple weeks ago, just started like writing like. The first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is just write, and I haven't, I've never really done that, and I'm not woo-woo at all, so I'm just like, I have to like find a way to meditate that's like actually productive stuff, like I can't sit in front of the TV, I have to be knitting or, or something like that, so like that to, that to me, like taking pictures, creating art or writing is, is meditating, but like keeping it positive, because we can we can be jerks to ourselves like and that fear just totally is the only thing that holds you back from doing what you're going to do and that i'm proud of you even though i'm not like that much older but that is so awesome aaron good thank you well i don't know if anybody has anything else to say but that was definitely my lesson learned so uh, as always, thank you guys, everybody. I love my Thursdays. Joanna, thank you so much for joining us this week. Um, awesome to have you, and thank you for staying up late with us. Yeah. And, Thanks um, for having me. It was a lovely pleasure to be here. <laughs> absolutely. And, of course, like we said, you can always go uh, talk to us more over at the Facebook group over at bit.ly slash no business. And I guess until next week, we'll see you guys later. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. <laughs>